All right, good morning, everyone. This is uh, getting started with Microsoft Azure and SQL databases. This is really a beginning aimed session, mainly for uh, just getting in there and starting out. So the expert in the crowd is going to most likely be completely underwhelmed. Um, but that's OK. Uh, maybe I'll share a tidbit or two of new information that you're not familiar with. So as uh, Rachel noted, my name is Jason Strait. Uh, I'll be your presenter today. I've been working with SQL Server and Azure for a while now. Uh, I don't have a specific resource page to point you guys to after this for um, Azure, but I, I did throw up a link there that just points to the cloud solutions that uh, Pragmatic Works has regarding Azure. Uh, if you do have questions, though, feel free afterwards or in the Q&A session for today to leave uh, questions there. And then if you want to, you can reach out after the fact. My email and Twitter handle are both on the screen there. So when we're getting started with uh, Microsoft Azure, and uh, typically you probably have heard it called Windows Azure. Um, Microsoft did announce a name change to this just recently. So it's no longer Windows Azure. It is now Microsoft Azure. Uh, but as, as we get going and get started with this, we, of course, have to start with the obligatory picture of some clouds. And what we have with Microsoft Azure is that ability to host out all our, a lot of our data processing needs. And the trouble with that is a lot of people get a little bit tense when you come down to the idea of letting other people, whoops, there we go, letting other people host and manage the, their database platform and their web services. It gets a little scary for people, but the cloud isn't really an evil place to be putting all of your data platform components or some of your data platform components. Uh, just because you use cloud doesn't necessarily, or, or use Microsoft Azure, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to put everything there. And what we're going to go through today is show you how you can take a look at some of the components that are there and maybe start looking at different approaches with Microsoft Azure and with how you design and architect out your data platforms so that you can really get what you need within the platform and do the kind of stuff that you want to do with Microsoft Azure and, and actually what you really want to do with your data platform so you can not just decide I'm going to have an all on premise or I'm going to have an all on um, all up in the cloud deployment but so that you know what pieces are where and so that you understand what you might want to do in one place versus the other. And so we're going to kind of go through here and just talk about the different things that are available and figure out what you want to know and, and what you should know. Uh, if you have questions about things that you want to know about Microsoft Azure and, and the different components with SQL database and virtual networks and uh, virtual machines, please make sure that you are dropping in questions into the Q&A box, and we'll get to as many of those towards the end as possible. Now, our, for our agenda today, we're basically going to cover five main areas. Uh, these are the main areas that, from a data platform perspective and from a, um, in, ensuring excuse me, that the data platform stays up, are the, are the five areas that I've really been focusing on with Microsoft Azure myself, and, and, and these are the areas that can really add to and enhance your data platform. Now, there are other components out there within uh, Microsoft Azure, but we're just not going to focus on those too much today. And so the first one that I want to focus on is, um, and, and before, before we get to that point, um, I should clarify that Microsoft Azure is, it's, an, it's an, a subscription-based pay for use platform. While it, it seems like the cloud is a newer term and people just started using it in the last few years, this is really just an extension of the hosting that's been available for years and years within data centers. There's a number of data centers here in the Minneapolis Twin Cities area that, that I've interacted with and all the cloud is is really an extension of what that was already providing. With those local data centers that, that people could go and host and, and get space on, you, you might um, use some servers that they already had, or you may just be renting some rack space or some floor space to bring in your own equipment. Uh, 
that kind of stuff has been going on for years and years. And all cloud-based computing is is an extension of that where you don't necessarily need to know or decide what hardware you're, you're putting in under the, under the covers. You're basically signing on to subscribe to some of, some of those resources that are already out there. Now, of course, you do share some of these resources with other people. Um, so as, as we'll talk about with uh, SQL Database, there is the concern for the noisy neighbor. But there are ways to get around a lot of these considerations. Now, the one thing to pay attention to whenever you're deploying every, anything out to um, Microsoft Azure is that there are multiple data centers worldwide. There's a number of data centers here in the United States. There's a number in Europe. There's a few in Asia. And you need to pay attention to which data centers you're going to because they will affect the latency of your data and your access to that data because if it's a 1,000 miles away, it can be it's going to take a few milliseconds seconds longer to get to it if, if it's, versus if it's 10 miles away. And, and those kind of things are important. But it also gives you that opportunity for a global reach without having to do a lot of extra work within your own data center to get that global reach. Because you can put components into any of the data centers that you want. And for the most part, when it comes to choosing between data centers, it's, it's really your choice. Um, there are two data centers in um, northern U.S. and southern U.S. that are close to some of the services just because of capacity issues. But for the most part, um, the, the locations and regions that are available are pretty much open. Going out to get onto Windows Azure, well, it's still branded Windows Azure on um, the Microsoft site, but it is Microsoft Azure from a market perspective, to get onto Mark, uh, Microsoft Azure, you just go to manage.microsoftazure.com, which I'll show you in, in a couple minutes when I go through some demos with SQL Database. And so SQL Database is where we want to start off with. It is the, 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 the first piece in our mix here. And with SQL Database, what we're basically looking is a managed relational database platform. This is literally almost the same as when you are putting a, a, a SQL Server database. If, if you go to your DBAs and you want to put a SQL Server database on one of the instances within your within your, your SQL Server environment, this is in a lot of ways the same thing. Um, this is re referred to as platform as a service. And because what you're doing is you're not getting um, an entire machine, you're not getting an entire instance, you're just getting a database that you can use very much like going to a database to a DBA and saying I need a database. Um, the, the upside to this is that you don't have to do a lot of additional effort to get this up and running. You don't have to think about a lot of the configuration things that you would have to worry about with a, a, an on-premise database. 